Today on The Real, on Girl Chat, Lonnie tells us about her star-studded night. On the outside, y'all, I was cool and calm, but on the inside, y'all, I was going crazy. Oh, oh. Then we're getting serious about soaring. Are you like, I'm, I'm a Mack truck. And? Did you hear? What? No. The Real's rumor mill is back. I like Nicki Minaj. You know that's my homegirl. I ain't gonna let you sit up here and talk about her. Plus, from Famous in Love, we've got Peppy Sanuga. And guest co-host Love and Hip Hop, Jocelyn Hernandez says farewell. I love you for being such a real friend. The Real. Chat, yes. yes. Yeah. They're lit today. That's what this they came awesome. here for. Yes, I love you guys. <laughs> All right, here's one thing though. As you can see, our girl Tam Tam isn't here today. You guys, she's not feeling well. But I know we're gonna miss you, Tam. Get better. But someone who is here is our guest co-host, television producer, entertainer, and personality is Jocelyn Hernandez. <laughs> I really love too. I love this it is too. my favorite of your hairdos. Yeah, Thank you. I like it. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, we look so good together sitting up here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like this is like, of course, you know I love me some Tamira. We miss you, babe. Yeah. yeah. Well, look at us. Okay. I know. Now it's your last day here with us, and you've been here before, so I want to know: was this experience different for you than the last time you were here? You know what? I feel more at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, naturally. So it's gonna be a little difficult for me to go and not come back. You know? Who said you're not coming back? Yeah. yeah. Shoo, your family here. You always got a place exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Okay, so this means you're ready for some girl chat. Let's do it. I'm ready for all you. All right. Bro. So, Lonnie, first yes. of all, we got to talk about your yes. exciting premiere week. Yes. This was amazing. I saw all the pictures. Tell us about it. Well, you know what? Thank you so much, Jeannie. I was lucky enough to attend the premiere of the new Bodyguard musical this past <laughs> Tuesday night. Oh, Everybody's talking about that. And let me tell you, the musical is based on the film by the same name. And I first want to give a shout out to Deborah Cox, the singer Ooh. who's starring in it. She is incredible. Her vocals. Lovely, insane. just so nice. I had such a good time backstage. Um, I got to hang out with a bunch of my girls, Yvette Nicole Brown, Kim Aww. Whitley, Erica Ash, Don Lewis, and Miss Angela Bassett. Yeah. So she doesn't age. Look no. at that picture. That's Angela on the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. that's her. Oh, she God. look. She looks comes like she's in her twenties. Okay, she, she just amazing. comes through. And you know what Angela said to me, y'all? What? what? She what? told me to tell y'all hi, and she's watching the show, and she saw you, Miss Jocelyn Hernandez. Ooh. Yes, she did. Yes. Yes. yes, that is so cool. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Angela Bassett. But she was in. She said, okay, see, what happened was, yeah. after the show, there was some paparazzi outside. Okay. And we wanted to, it was just a block for the after party. Mm -hmm. You know how they have the after party? Yeah, you walk and over so, to it. Right. And so she found out that I was her sorority sister. I'm a Delta. She a Delta. Oh, so we really got cool. Hey. Hey. Well, hey. 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 Okay. Wow. But, so she just grabbed my arm. She said, come on, Lonnie, we got to go through these paparazzi nice. and get a block to the place. So, you know, she just grabbed my arm like this. Oh, and I love we're walking this. down Hollywood Boulevard, Angela Bassett and I. Now, on the outside, y'all, I was cool and calm because she was like, I watched the show. I saw Jocelyn Hernandez. Y'all doing such a great job. And she was just talking to me. But on the inside, y'all, I was going crazy. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. you, were, you were like Zendaya when Rihanna posted her after the match. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. I was like, this is what love's got to do with it. This is Stella got her groove back. You yes. Know? But I kept it calm because I'm like, I want her to come back on the show and I want her to think, you know, I'm like, ooh. And you, you know, know what, Lonnie? <laughs> I love you for being such a real friend. Because yeah. you know what? Another girl would not have told me that Angela Bassett said mm -hmm. my name. Yeah. Well, I love it real. 
I you love you, for real. Had in this you have another had, yeah, friend of our show that we saw there was RuPaul, and he told me yes. to you ladies high. I love him. I love that. Yes. Okay. I love RuPaul, That's and you know what? Thing. RuPaul is the real deal, right? I was going, you know, because it was like in intermission. I went to say hi to him, and then I was turning back around, and he said, Lonnie. And I was like, huh? He said, come here. He <gasps> said, I was like, what? You know, he said, whoever's doing your face, don't let him leave. Okay. Uh, okay. I was like, yes, are you Glenn. serious? You're complimenting? No, this is. Yo, beats for the gods. Beats. So, when Glenn you... Allen, that was for you, okay? Oh, love RuPaul that. loves your work. He wanted to say hi to all you girls. And that was my amazing night That's at the so party. Dope. I love that. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Now, speaking Ooh. of stars, a new book called Rising Star by David J. Garrow claims that former president Barack Obama and Michelle almost weren't a married couple. Oh, don't talk like that. I know. According to the book, <laughs> it's alleged yeah. that Barack actually asked his girlfriend from back in the day, Sheila Miyosi Yagar, to marry him not once, but twice. Oh, because no, Sheila was 23 and Barack was 25, Sheila's mother said that they were too young to get married, and eventually Sheila and Barack, you know, they grew apart due to his political aspiration, and he fell for Michelle, and the rest is history. Wow. I know. That's for that. Well, All right, so ladies, I want to know, because people are making a really big deal about this. If you, if you found out that the man that you are with had uh, proposed to another woman before you, would it make you feel some type of way? Would you feel okay. upset can, about that? Can I just step in? Yes, yes. girl. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. First of all, he saved the best for last, which was Michelle. Okay? And second of all, he wouldn't even look good with that lady. That lady looked like a grandmama. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it... Let's not kill what the lady looked Look, like. I'm trying to understand why they're making a big deal out of this. I mean, it's, he's a man. He was going to date of other course. people before that. He wasn't that. three years old when exactly. he met her. He has I mean, probably had girlfriends before. before. Yeah. In fact, it's not a big deal at all. I don't think it's a big deal. Because, of course, we know Mr. Barack Obama has some game he's got uh, going on. He's a good looking man. <laughs> but Girls you got to him. admit, yeah. you know she regrets saying no. Oh. Now, you that you know. That's oh, the story. The story magic. isn't, that oh, my that... God, he actually ask someone else to marry him. Like, people have lives before you but meet them. I'm just going to tell you something, Lonnie. The one that regrets is Barack Obama for asking that lady to marry him. <laughs> he, he almost messed up. What? Yeah. He, he almost, already, he, he he almost messed now. up if you really he's like, think He's about. like this. But this is... You this. got me, God. But this you is what me. I believe <laughs> in faith because he asked her twice, okay? <laughs> he asked her twice. She said no. And then they grew apart. So really... It's really not her mistake. Who is it this woman? It was the woman? fact that... Because she still has a life. She right, still right. has a life. She's doing good. You can say what you want to say, but she still has a life. It just was not meant to be. Right, That's all right. it is. Destiny. Right. I so, believe in it. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Now yes. another one, another one, another one. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, here we wait. go. Hold Messy.com. I know. Okay. Wait, wait. Wait. Oh. Have what you, you ever... Said. Straight up. Have you ever really wanted to be with somebody... Like, when you're young, you're like, oh, my God, that's the man I would want to marry. He yes. everything to me. Like, this is the dude. And then he maybe he dumps you or he breaks up with you, breaks your heart in some type of way. You move on in life. And then his picture comes up on Facebook 10 years later, and he looks terrible. Okay. Yes. And you're like, thank you, God, for looking out. <laughs> he was not the one. When you look back, you're like, yo, that didn't work out for a reason. Oh, I absolutely let me tell have. you, I that happened His to plan me. is better than yours. One of my college boyfriends, okay, because I don't want to, okay. <laughs> One of my college boyfriends, <laughs> right, just put it like that. Okay. And he ended up marrying somebody else. He got married, and I ended up doing my thing. He came back, we got in touch with each other. He was a drug addict. Oh. Yeah. So, see... You can sit back and think that destiny is not on your yeah. side, okay? It is on your side. And the thing is, is that he's not on drugs anymore. He got off of it. But can you imagine that if he would have been yeah. with me, Damn. I wouldn't be where I am today. Well. So sometimes you got to listen of course. to destiny. Yes. Jocelyn, would you feel some type of way if your man was engaged to somebody before you? <sighs> Has you put, he been? You put me on the spot. Who, my baby daddy? Yeah. yeah. Child. What? Has, Has he been whole... engaged before? Has girl, he been he's been engaged. Every time he, by the way. Every time he gets with a girl, he's engaged. 
a lot of guys, they want to play with you and they want to carry you and they want to, oh, you know, I love you. You know, let's fake get engaged for, you know, three, four years and they never marry you. And they'll drag you along and drag you along and drag you along. Before you know it, you're 15. Don't nobody want to marry you. Like, you with, <laughs> with, with that guy for 15, 20 years, you wait know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And then you start becoming, then you become Molly the Maid. You know, it's just a difficult situation. I think for relationships to really, really work with a man and a woman, I think that a woman got to put her foot down and make make the man do what we want them Give to do. Give him an ultimatum? Of course. Of course, yes. Okay. I have heard... I have heard of a lot of guys that just give women a ring to just keep them there. Unlock. That's what yeah. I'm saying Keep them unlocked. They just don't want them to go anywhere, so they ask so them. So how long do you wait? Yeah, how, what's, the, what's the rule? How you do know, you know the difference between like, a guy If you don't know you want to be with a person forever in three years, then you need to keep it moving. Oh, dang, three years? I mean, how long does it take? I almost say two I mean, years. I, mean, I, I really want to say older, one year. the time span probably gets a little shorter. Yeah. Like, I don't mind dating somebody for a bunch of years. That's not weird to me. But honestly, when you're older, and if I was in the dating scene now, I'm not waiting five years for you to figure out if you like me or not. Hell no. Like, either you know it or you don't. Either you down, either I'm the one or I'm not. But don't waste my time. Absolutely. You know what? This whole story about Obama is like, this happened when he was like 25. That's so and, young. But rem- no, but see, this is what I keep trying to tell you, youngsters, okay? Hey, what, what line? When you in your 20s, you, don't... you need to start making plans for your life. And that's what he was doing. Once he got 25, he kind of knew because if you read his book, he was kind of like the hippy dippy type of person. You know, he's kind of oh, he like you, Jeannie, right? You know what I mean? He was like, you know, but yeah. then. He got himself together, yeah. and that's when he started getting really ambitious, yes. and that's why he and this other woman kind of collided. When I tell y'all, 25 to 30, in my opinion, is the most important time, if you that age, to decide what you want to make yes. plans for your life. I agree, I do yeah, with I agree with that. that. And you know what I, I did like not do too? good in that planning time. <laughs> you know, well, I did, because when people say, by the time I was 27, I had been married, I had gotten a degree, um, I decided that I didn't want to work in corporate America. I said, I'm going to become an entertainer. It took me just like the president. I'm not comparing myself to him, but you see, he didn't become president until he was in his 40s. I didn't give me a talk show until I was in my 40s. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. when you're black, when you're a person of color, it takes time. So yeah. he was work. knowing. He, you got to yeah. put in work and everything. But also, Lonnie, do you think that there's something that changes within you once you turn a certain age. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that magic number for women is 30. Yeah, was, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I it's ain't got definitely no problem. 30. Because you 30. Yes. Oh, honey, I just turned 30 and I don't play no games. Like, See, you either... You like, you like, oh, you're going to get out of my face. This okay. is real, you guys. Okay, that. wait a minute. I want to hear, because you mm-hmm. just turned 30. For me, I just for you, 30 was a huge turning point in my life. Do you feel like when you turned 30... You were like, okay, I got to get it together. And if so, what were the things that you were like, you got to get together? Here's the thing. I've had my stuff together since I was 25 because I've been in the streets. I was wild before I had the baby. Yeah. You know, but when I turned about 25, 26, 27, you know, I was still partying and having a good time. As soon as I hit 30 and I had a baby, which was just three months ago, four months ago, there's no tolerance for shenanigans. Yeah. Whether it's for... Work relationship, man relationship, mm-hmm. girlfriend's relationship, yeah. family relationship. It's just like, I'm not doing this. Like, 30 for a woman is just like, you know? Snoring can be funny to some, and maybe sometimes it's cute, like with babies and stuff, but when the person you live with does it on a regular basis, yo, it's no joke. In fact, you may become sleep deprived, right? The Huffington Post says that there are over 90 million Americans who are serious snorers. And Cosmo says that some of the reasons for snoring are A, being a heavy sleeper, B, having a stuffy nose, or C, drinking too much dang alcohol. (laughs) So is anybody here a snorer or have you... Or are you sleeping with one right now? I'm a snore. I oh, admit it. I knew it. Oh my I God. Knew you it. know I snore. I knew it. All the alcohol I drink. One time, ooh, I was sleeping with this dude. And I, you know, because what I try to do is I try to fall asleep. Yeah. I, I try to fall asleep after they do, because I know I snore. And I was just tired. <laughs> and I woke up, and he was looking at me just like you looking at me right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was snoring, huh? He's like, yeah. Wait, Nani, are you one of those snores that are cute where it's like, 
Or are you like... Absolutely not. I'm a Mack truck. Oh, yes, I'm like, hell no. Well, this is why Lonnie can sleep over my house. You know why? Because my dad snored, my husband snores. <laughs> Like, it does not bother me at all. I sleep right through it. I never even noticed that you snored uh, her And her. she slept over my house multiple times yep. in the same room with me, never even noticed. I'll I can see. sleep through any... I don't hear, I don't... It doesn't bother... If I'm honest, actually, Israel's snoring, it almost... It's soothing to me. Because oh, I'll sleep on his chest. No. Oh. And I can, it, like, soothes me to go to sleep. It's I like love a it. sound machine. Girl, y'all need to go live in the no. jungle with all of that. I love you it. guys are My baby people. daddy... This Speedy is, Jack. Yeah. Okay. That fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to live under the same roof. I promise you, like, I almost stopped eating pork and meat and all the good stuff. Oh, wow. Because he was animalistic. You ever slap in the bed with a person where it's just like so, it was just like disgustingly just loud. I'm like, what, what's going on? I changed my room, went upstairs. He slept in his own bed. I slept in my own room. For six years, we worked together oh. under the same roof. We only slept together for like a year. What did I, it sound like, girl? Like, girl, a, like, like a, a pig. Pork. That's why like she said. She couldn't even eat pig anymore. I, because I, I couldn't. Did you make the sound? No, it was, I've never. <laughs> <seen>. <laughs> What was it? That, you got that, I could deal it. with. I could deal with that. Now I could deal with that. Oh, it was just sleep over your house. Yeah. that's what I sound like. I could deal with that, but it's just like it, it gets up under my skin. It's oh. like, I just can't deal. Like, the, and I always tell him like, you need to go get help. You need to go fix that up. Yeah, yes. you know, Whatever's going up in there, because that is not appealing. And you know what he tells me? <laughs> and you know, you know what he says to me? What? Good. As soon as I have sex, I could put them out and I can get me some sleep. Wait, so you guys had separate rooms? Yes, for five years. So you were together for six years, living under the same roof, and for five years of the six, you slept in separate rooms? Absolutely. I need my beauty sleep. I, okay. <laughs> well, all right. Well, it's that time of the year that's filled with pomp and circumstance, and while those high school seniors are signing yearbooks and tossing their caps in the air, it's time for you to find them the perfect present. This is Gift the Grad. <laughs> I have two people in my family graduating this year. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my gift first. This is great for your grad that will be moving into a dorm this coming fall. It's a... It's a privacy tent for your dorm room bed. Applause. So this is perfect for when you're craving a little alone time, because it's hard to get privacy in dorm rooms, and your yeah. roommate just won't take the hint. You know about this, Lonnie. It's an easy setup, so you don't worry. <laughs> it fits those extra long twin size college mattresses. So you know the common beds that you find? Now you can sleep, study, or do whatever else you want to do in your bed. Yes! Lonnie, without the worry of an extra pair of prying eyes. You guys, this bed tent costs $99.99, and your college-bound grad will love you so much for this gift of privacy. They might even come back for visits. Isn't that wow. cool? That's great. That's great. Yeah. You can close it, you know? Yeah. You okay. don't want people watching you all the time. I think my gift is just a little bit better, okay? okay. Let's see, let's this see. This is something your grad would not be able to live without. It's A, okay, you ready? It's a ramen noodle cooker. What college kid doesn't need, doesn't love him? Doesn't love ramen noodles? Yeah, this cooker true. microwaves perfect ramen noodles. It's just three minutes, and you don't have to worry about the dishes. Your college student would never go hungry. That's and true. And it's only seven dollars and oh. ninety nine cents. Now that that's a great price. Yeah. So they tell okay. you them ramen noodles. While y'all laughing, that's what got us through college, okay? They cheat and we eat and we can still think. That's good. Now, I've got something that's going to really help your grad seize the day. It's a... Carpet alarm clock. This alarm by Ruggie is going to get your college student out of bed like a champ. Just program your desired wake-up time so you're going to clock and you'll never have to hit the snooze button again because you actually have to get out the bed and stand on it for like three seconds in order what? for it to turn off. Yeah. That's genius. Mm -hmm. This costs $99.99, but the feeling of being forced out of bed and start your day is priceless. That is awesome. You're welcome, folks. Because you got to make it to class, man. You pay exactly. for it. Exactly. This sure. is good. Now, my grad gift is the perfect way for your college student to keep in touch with their BFFs from high school. You guys ready for this? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> my dad, Adrian, 
like that. Snapchat spectacle. Wow. Yes, you guys. This is so awesome. Now you can snap <laughs> videos directly from your perspective. Just put these on and you press this button that's right here. You see it? See how it just came on? Okay, okay. Yes, now, okay, you guys, this is actually gonna take your 10 second videos Ooh. that will be there. Yeah. See, okay, you ready, ready? So how do you That know? video will then wirelessly add to your memories on Snapchat, and it comes, you guys, with a charging phone case, and they're actually pretty stylish, yeah, right? Yeah, I think this is cute. Wait, wait, you know, wait, wait, wait. Um, on, when I was on the red carpet for the premiere of the bodyguard, yes. the lady had that. I was like, what you doing? And That's she's like, smart. This, this is it. She and I saw it away. In sta at Stagecoach. Shania Twain was doing her concert with them on. So, so do you send that to the, the phone? Concert. You send that straight to your phone? Yes, you send it right to the phone, you guys. These are $129.99, and and are a great gift of functional That's fashion. That's the best gift right That's there. The yeah. Our next guest is a beautiful actress who's appeared on shows like The Fosters and Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Now she co-stars on the new hit show, Famous in Love. Please welcome Pepe Shanuga. <laughs> All you guys are incredible, but Adrian. Oh, really? Cheetah, Girl <laughs> Cheetah Girls was my life. Aww. So thank you. Honestly, that means a lot. You are so stunning. You turned that corner and I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. Aww. Welcome thank you. to the show. We're so happy thank to have you, so you here. here. So thank awesome you. to have you. Now, thank you. You have a very interesting background. Uh, where are you from? So, I am originally from Lagos, Nigeria. Yes, represent. Yes. yes. And, um, um, yeah, I came out here when I was 11 years old. You know, it's a, it's a story. So, my yeah. aunt won Miss Nigeria okay. in 1998. And one of the prizes was that she had to, she got to come to the United States. So, oh, she came and nice. then she just never came back home. <laughs> so, so, that's how I had a family that was here. Yeah. And then my, aunt, my mom got a job at Virgin Atlantic. Okay. And she was a flight attendant. She used to travel oh, back and forth. Fun. And before then, we had never been out of the country, out right. of Africa, um, out of Nigeria, out of Africa, anywhere. So, that was like a, an introduction to all these new things. And wow. It inspired her to give us a better life. So that's why we kind of just moved. Well, we're glad you're here. We're well, so happy. You're so well, beautiful. Thank you. you are beautiful. And I've been to Nigeria, so wow. other girls look like you. By the way, they are gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous, you. gorgeous. Yeah. There are no tree monsters in Nigeria. <laughs> they are <laughs> They're beautiful just like her. So thank you. I, I, I feel it. How did it feel? How did you feel when you had to move away from your com comfortable you know, place of habitat? being so far, because I'm from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. so it's so different. Coming all the way to California, mm -hmm. how, did, how did you adapt to that? It was tough, obviously, especially being 11. I came right in the prime of any middle school bullying you would, you know. Yeah, it was tough to fit in and to, to do that, but that's not, that's not really the message that I, I even want to get out, because first of all, it was tough going through it, but now as a young woman, I realize this happens to everyone and I moved from like Nigeria like how yeah. different could I stuck out like a sore thumb yeah so obviously I've heard every African joke I've heard okay. every little mm -hmm, like hit me whatever but you know it, it really my message really is just that you have to stick with your values you know when I was when I was a kid I really tried to assimilate and be more American uh -huh. and I had an uh, my mom's friend who told me you know you want to fit in so bad because you don't have anyone around you that reminds you of who you are. Everyone else is different from you. Mm -hmm. But when you grow older, all these things that you're trying to like suppress about yourself, these are the things you're going to embrace. And it really, that's really what happened. Now wow. I'm so, I've, I've never been not proud of myself or my culture, but mm -hmm. now it's like I'm ready to like hold that flag. That's okay. right, girl. That's so dumb. So that you grow into loving yourself. I yeah. love that. Now, on your show, Famous yeah. in Love, your character is a singer. Yes. Do you sing in real life? <laughs> 
Yes and no, because I sing all the time. I sing, I, I'm most likely to burst out into song, but I don't sing for my career. That's not, acting is like my passion. That's something that I'm, I'm I breathe, live and breathe it. But you can't yeah. sing. I can't can sing. Note. I sing on the show.